What you do? So we're talking about jam bands today. Welcome, Casino Guitarist, Backstrand. Jonathan. Well, let's just cut to the chase. I'm going to talk about the Grateful Dead and Fish. And Jonathan, take us down your road. I love jam bands, as you know. Yes, you But do. I love southern jam bands. <sighs> so I, I was expecting this a little bit. So. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could tell. That's sort of where I live. But I love the Almond Brothers. As do I, but I, I think you love them in an obsessed way. In an obsessed way. Almost all of my jam bands come in like a little weird pyramid from the Almond Brothers. Could we call that a family tree, maybe? I believe we could. Bring us down that road. So. That's really weird, too, but continue. It is a little weird. So, obviously, you got the Almond Brothers who are amazing and, you know, put on these fantastic shows. Probably the greatest live album of all time. That's another video. Um, I think we did that. We talked, we, about, we talked about that a little bit, didn't we'll we? We'll do yeah. another video on that. We'll do it. Early. Anyways. So, fantastic. They jam. They, they, you should listen to them because they're amazing. But then you start getting into, you know, different guitar players with the Almond Brothers. And the first thing, I, I guess, that I would sort of put in my little pyramid is you got, uh, you know, Warren Haynes starts this little side project, turns into Government Mule. Yes. Which is pretty awesome. Uh, I never went down the Government Mule path. Never went down the Government but, Mule um, path. But, but I respect it. Mule, Mule's awesome. So... Kind of the ultimate sort of southern rock <laughs> jam band, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, I would like to be Warren Haynes. Other other than that, no, I, no I big deal. I feel like you kind of are Warren I, Haynes. I'm sort of like the you know young. the dollar the dollar general version, which is not a bad thing to be. Nah, I'm okay with it. Could you be like the dollar general of something horrible, and it's Warren yeah. Haynes. That's pretty. Yeah, it's fine. Pretty groovy. It's totally fine. So you got Governor Mule. Okay. The other guitar player who ended up being you know one of the Almond Brothers guitar players, Derek Trucks just in a whole nother stratosphere of guitar playing and slide playing. Who, who I saw opening for the Almond Brothers when he was 13, I believe. God, and yeah. I don't, it, it was insane. Amazing. It, it, I was like, I'm playing guitar. I'm about the same age as him. I was like, oh, <laughs> they he's all, uh, way better than I am. <laughs> a little, a little, yeah. At 13 than I am now. <laughs> Is that like, that's like that video of him playing Layla with them when he's like 12. I don't know. It was it's just like, a, oh was, my God. It but, was yeah. amazing. It, was, it wasn't even upsetting. Continue. So obviously... You know, you had Derek Trucks band forever, and then Susan Tedeschi, and then they get married, and you know, they're like the greatest band on earth at the moment, Tedeschi Trucks, right? And so they're sort of like southern, like soul, blues, like funk jam band. Yes. Which is amazing, right? It is pretty amazing. All still in that sort of same little family, right? <laughs> then you have probably, I don't know, I think this is the jam band people are the most crazy about as far as they like follow them around these days. Because I know a dude not far from here, who, like, goes to Mexico with them every year and, like, sees them, like, just 15 times a year. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. Which is, I mean, amazing. No, I have nothing but respect for that. Oh, my but goodness. But Widespread Panic. Yes. So, and Widespread Panic kind of connects to my world, too. They connect. To. They're, they're probably the bridge. They might you know? be the bridge. Because, now, this was more recent. Like, recently, more recently, I suppose, um, Derek Truck's brother became their drummer. <laughs> I have so many jokes brewing right now, but continue. I'll just say them. Like, we'll just, people know. We'll just, might as well say well, But it's funny, though, because like, you know, people, like, we're in the South. There's guitar yeah. shops based in the South, and we all live in the South. We're in North Carolina. We love it here. People make a lot of jokes about the South being inbred. So, we'll in, in fact, in literal definition, Southern <laughs> rock band jam bands are inbred. In the best way. The, in the best way. The path is like, you know, start at the Alma Brothers. It's just a circle. <laughs> There's no real break. The branches kind of curve back in. But so he becomes... Their drummer, he starts filling in, becomes their drummer. He marries Jimmy Herring's daughter. I'm not oh sure God. where that is in the timeline, like the, the marriage of the daughter. I don't know if that was before or after the band. But anyways, they're all just oh, sort of... Which band are we talking about now? Widespread Panic. Which is funny, another side story. Their manager's from Southern Pines here. What? And when he got married, the entire band came and they got married up the street about three blocks away. Okay, now that's The whole band was here. And this was a few years back. But that's it's amazing. A pretty neat story. Um, so what about this guy named Marcus King? Is he part of this? Marcus King. Is he connected in any way? I was sort of championed by Warren Haynes and Warren Haynes' wife. <laughs> and he's also and he's played, South Carolina. And he's yeah. played literally a block away at the outdoor theater that we yes. have down the street from the guitar. And actually came here and hung out. Hung out. And yeah, he hung here. He's on one of our videos wow, way back in there somewhere. Super cool dude. He's really good. He's very good. Um, so why do you think Southern jam bands are so important? I mean, I love the music. I, I think it's organic. I think it's one of the last, I shouldn't say last, it's one of the 
maybe few really pure forms of, of, of sort of instrumental, not instrumental, but improvised. You go see the show and you don't know what's going to happen. There's generally not tracks. There's not, you know, I mean, there's a set list, obviously, but you just right. you just never know what, what experience you're going to have. Well, I'd that. even add, like, they're so heavily blues-based. Yes. Very different than what I'm going to talk about in a minute. Right. And it's... And that's such a core of guitar playing. It is. And we have a whole video and preps for that too. Watch our channel. You'll find it somewhere in there. But um, how important blues is for playing. They've just taken it and they've sort of hypercharged it. Yeah. And they do create these long format jams based on a really simple format yeah. too. And um, But they just do it, you know... <laughs> With ease of a <laughs> of a swan of fire coming from the heavens no big above. Deal. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I've seen the Allman Brothers, you know, all over the country, and it's every time it was it was amazing. All, all those people we've talked about so far are yeah. It's just. It's, and I, I gave that now. Now Jonathan said something about we're going to jump into my world for a minute. He said something about you never know what's going to happen at his shows. Oh. Uh, oh wait. Contraire, fair, my friend. <laughs> Let's talk about fair fish enough. in the Grateful Dead. It's a whole other adventure. You do know you're probably going to smell a lot of weed. What? <laughs> yes, I know. You're, you're doing just, that. <laughs> and, but it, the, so, we'll, so we'll just ju we'll jump right into that. There's like sort of a drug culture connection with the Grateful Dead, and and like and with fish too. But like it's funny because like Trey's been sober for God like over a decade. That's funny. He didn't smoke or drink or anything. Wow. Uh, um, but like, there's still a culture of it. But it's not like a bad. It's the happiest, hippiest, most fun culture it's like a party that never stops it hasn't stopped since 1965 yeah it started when the grateful dead formed in 65 within this nice little area in like in the western part of our country and and they create they sort of stem this whole organic where every show was different the band was sort of fluid in some ways um i mean we know the band is wonderful but jerry garcia as a guitar player and that's what we are we um i think he I was a blues-based learner myself. When I heard Jerry for the first time, it kind of, I was like, oh, I can play notes that aren't just the pentatonic. Right. I didn't really know that. I was like, Steve Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, Jimi Hendrix is different. He's sort of like God. I was in Jimmy Page. I'm copying all these guys. Then I hear Jerry. I'm like, what's he doing? He doesn't have distortion. It's this weird, <laughs> strange tone. He just kind of like noodles what? around. And, but like the noodling is amazing. What and are these notes? Yeah. I know. I was like, whoa, there's these two notes that were added to the pentatonic scale to make it a major scale all of a sudden. And it's, you know, or a minor scale, whichever you prefer. Diatonic. But, oh, that's just confusing Sorry. now. Now you're just getting theoretical and I'm not smart. I'm not educated. I've just heard the words. Don't worry. <laughs> no, but it's um, but it And it takes you on these journeys. He, they start with a core. The same with fish. We'll get into the fish in a minute. I'm going to spend more time on fish, believe it or not. So any fish heads, stick with us. Um, uh, you, you start with a three to four to five minute song and then it becomes a 25 minute exploration and I'd almost say it can become a religious experience. I think that's true. Especially with the addition of psychotropic drugs. And Absolutely. Whatnot, um, which there's been studies done back in the 60s and 70s and starting to happen again like from Harvard and everywhere that this is how religious experiences are happening like through like these you know a little bit of chemical alteration and putting yourself in a certain state and like that's not just what this music's about. The music's another thing, but I'm just that's it was a huge part of it in the beginning. And that band is what they did together. Yeah, man. And totally running it in simultaneous like paths as the Almond Brothers, which Absolutely. is really cool. Yeah. And you know they all knew each other. Oh, they were all yeah, definitely. And Jerry's been to this town too, which is hilarious. I love that story. Now I can share it with a lot of people instead of just the people in the shop. Like Jerry came once to this place called Pinecrest Inn. And I didn't get to meet him. This is a story that's become sort of legendary in the music circles of here. And he came there, and he's sitting there, just having his, you know, cigarette or coffee or drink, whatever he's doing. I don't know the details. And this this older woman who has since passed and gone to the heavens, she came up to him and said, "Hi, my name is X. That's not her name." I said, "What's your name?" He says, "My name's Jerry." And um, so what do you do for a living? He goes, "Well, I um, I'm in a band." And she pauses for a minute and she looks at him and she goes, "But what do you do for a living?" And his answer <laughs> doesn't lose a beat. I sell ties, <laughs> Which, and that's it. I think that's fantastic because <laughs> he did have a great empire of swag, his tie company and, and business. But anyway, it's kind of amazing. It's like we're just briefly touching on it. We want to get comments too, obviously. Yeah, like because there's some jam band hate out there. There's there's that, people, yeah. That's why we you know? even guys in the shop. Some people are like I hate jam bands. This is garbage. And like Jonathan and I are like the jam band champions, and we want the jam band champions out there to get on this. Talk to us. We're going to talk some more about fish. Don't get ready. But, I, I, <laughs> but we need that. Now, fish, 
1983 they're formed, 85 is really when they start going. So you think about it, it's like it's 20 years after the dead, and they, they form up in Vermont, they're a bunch of strange like dudes just playing instruments, and they're, these are guys in their 50s now, and, and, they're, and they're still selling out auditorium. They have not stopped, except for this whole COVID pause. But they have not stopped touring since 85, really. And they just sell out auditoriums, and their songs, again, are these three-minute little chords, like Fluffhead, and then it goes into Fluff's Journey, and you have no idea what's going to happen. And people are like, why do you like fish? They're singing, and their songs aren't that good. I'm like, maybe <laughs> that's true. <laughs> maybe. There could be some merit there, but. but. No, there's something magical to them. Like, why do people go to, and I'll get why, what the magic is, my opinion what the magic is. Well, why do people go see, they don't just go see one fish show. They see four fish shows a year. Yeah. Sometimes, and go follow them. It's yes. like the dead, but like, it's different. It's, um, I, there's a magic to the fish music that it's, it's almost, the majority of it's very happy. Right. And it's very, and they have like sort of a funky rhythm bass to it. So it's very funk based. And they're phenomenal musicians. Like Trey is one of the best living guitar players out Ridiculously there. Ridiculously good. Um, and if you think he's not, then I just disagree with you and you're wrong. You have a bad opinion. <laughs> no, uh, we, there's no debate there. He's, he's phenomenal. Like it, we can, you can sit in a room with him, you can try to play with him, and he just, he does things that are not normal. Right. Um, and the, their shows become, again, a religious experience, but also an extremely fun experience. And you find that you're, you're going to see the same people at these shows. It's almost a family. You won't know their names. Be like, man, I remember Split Open and Melt when we were kind of going crazy, and you were there too, dancing, and you can't dance well at all. I'm like, I know. Um, but no one's sad at these shows. No. no one's down. No one's depressed. Everyone's happy. Everyone's glad to see you. I mean, it's like, it's, if you've never experienced it. You should just go. You, you need to go. Even if you don't like fish music, you think you don't like fish, like go to a fish show. It will change your life. You'll either confirm that you don't like fish at all, um, or, I mean, it is the ultimate of like, it's definitely silly, silly white people up yes. on stage. No, it is. I mean, that the is drummer's true. wearing a dress sometimes. They're dr jumping on trampolines about 33.6% of their shows. I've actually done the stats on this. <laughs> I'm a little bit awkward with my obsession with certain uh. bands. They, um... It's it's an inch. They'll play the vacuum cleaner. They'll do these Man. vocal sort of sweet Adeline type four part harmonies, which are amazing. Not very good all the time, but amazing. But still amazing. They'll do like sort of these like really bad beatbox things for like ten minutes, and it's cool. It's just fun. It's, it's fun. fun. And it's okay to be fun. It's fun. And like <laughs> then then like they they always they have this way of like, oh, it's it's called the hose. When like when Trey, I know it's a strange. If you're a fish head, you own the hose. <laughs> this, oh, yeah. I know you're like, what are you talking about, Baxter? I had to prepare for this video what? beforehand. We shoot these in the morning too. <sighs> but on the hose is like when when the whole band reaches this sort of like peak and you reach that again that religious experience of like the high of when you're getting there and like they don't know what's gonna happen. It doesn't happen every time. But when Trey gets to that point where he hits the high notes happen, the whole band reaches that crescendo, and it is a magical moment and. I've experienced a lot of times. I went when I was in high school at first, and I've gone since. I haven't been in a long time. Was it the fish tribute band thing you guys did? When is that? Was it yeah, Fish I, or Grateful Dead you did? I was in a fishing sort of Grateful Dead type <laughs> band in, in school, and we got paid a lot of money. Uh, yeah. Because like we were in Nashville, and like everybody at Vanderbilt were like, we were at the frats all the time, and, and I didn't have to. I couldn't be in a frat. I'm not cool or anything. <laughs> But um, but, but you can play jam bands. I could play there. jam bands there, yes. <laughs> and like people would like like the cute girls would talk to me for the first time in my that's life. Awesome. This is of course in the '90s when like fish was so. But that's another thing. Where, how did fish get so huge? Is like well, Jerry Garcia died at 95. Fish was sort of at the peak in the '90s in a lot of ways, where Trey was just power charging as a new guitar player in the in the field of music. And then like you know, he, Jerry dies in '95. Grateful Dead goes on hiatus. Where do the Deadheads go? They have they funnel to fish yeah. a little bit because fish is the natural progression there too, right. and then um, and then we and then fortunately we have the dead reform years later, and then it's this like great amalgamation of like jam bands have reached it has it's this, it's a they have and, and then fish and dead and the other thing I didn't mention oh, I'm a miss they're one of the first bands Grateful Dead and Fish both together like but Grateful Dead first record our shows. Yeah. They had recorders everywhere. Every other show you'd go to, like Kiss or anybody's like, don't record it. Joe, you can't do it. Because we're no not cameras. that good live. Right. You know, but like Fish, like in the, in De the Dead, they consider like the, the, the song was just the start of the art. And they wanted the fans to be able to share it. So back in the old days, you had, you know, you had records that would be shared. Then you had tape cassettes. That was the big thing. And so there'd be tapes like, did you get the Fish like 93 show? 
because like, I feel like that mid '90s is sort of Fish's magic land. They're great today too. It's same thing. It's even gotten better. But there was this weird energy they had. In, they had in. Sorry, I'm a little nerdy. No, no you're going good. hard on I Fish like and the Dead right now. But I think that's part of that culture around. It's, it's become culture for all these jam bands that it's you know people trade the bootlegs and there's now there's all these like platforms where they stream. Yes. These different jam band shows, which and, is you so know, weird to me. It is kind of weird, but it's awesome. I love them. You it's know? what's well, it's almost like a record is stagnant. Yeah, you made it and it's done. That's it. Put it in a time capsule. Here it is. Enjoy it. I hope you like it. The the live music keeps growing, and you pass it to fans, and each fan has a different experience with it. I still have some of my old Fish tapes. That's I don't awesome. have a tape player, but, I have some but fish you got them. Hey, I'm not getting rid of them. I can't do that. But it's um, it creates a community, and um. Whereas other artists have fans, yeah, like the jam bands from like the Almond Brothers to Tedeschi Trucks to Widespread. This was Widespread was sort of blowing up at the same time as Fish in the Nineties. They were sort of parallel. I feel parallel, like, yeah, because yeah, I remember they both come through Nashville a lot, right. and and I feel like they both exploded with that loss of the Grateful Dead. You know, both they both benefited from that. They, they did. Um, it's um, which was a great thing that there were these bands to sort of step into that. No, because like because you know? we did, we've lost that culture of jam bands was sort of. Kind of almost lost in a bit with the com- not the commercialization of music that's always been there, but um you know like the the late nineties where we were talking about like you know the Creed and Nickelback Three Doors Down and Encounter that was Backstreet Boys and Sync Christina and Britney Spears and and then you had these bands sort of running in parallel under the radar where like the weird Burnout kids are listening to it and that's something we can agree on for both <laughs> everyone was smoking a lot for the, the fans of both these Southern rock. <laughs> And like we honestly don't think one's better than the other. There's no, we, we yes, trips. we love them all. Just to tie it all together to make sure the whole inbred circle is complete. Yes, oh god. Did you see? And you guys need to go watch this if you haven't seen it. This is a great introduction. There's Trey Anastasio with Tedeschi Trucks. Ooh. They're at Lockin. This is recent, and they do the whole Layla album. Damn. And it is amazing. I mean, like if you really want to see Derek and Trey both just like. And such get different players, it. too. Uh, they're super different. That's but what it's makes it fantastic, fantastic for yeah. me, too, because you get, uh, that's amazing. So, yeah, I mean, nice. what we really want here is we want to see you guys communicating with each yes. other, too, and like talking about the shows you've seen, because it's a plethora of the, probably the best shows in the history of music in the world. Absolutely. I would agree I mean, with that. I wouldn't, I, I mean, we have bands like, we can talk about Led Zeppelin, but they're not a jam band. Like, they're just right. a famous show. They, these are living, breathing legacies that, never stop since their incarnation and when they do they'll continue with what they've already created absolutely i'm almost getting teary here right this is awesome getting heavy High five. This is fun. <laughs> this is, so we're getting excited so yeah please share um hit what did they please do, they, do. They hit, hit like hit subscribe hit the bell so you see all of our silly videos what like does the this. bell do the bell makes sure that you actually get all the the notifications wow that's kind of that's that's a neat thing. Or you can make it where you get no notifications. Don't do that. If you're like, oh, I want to subscribe, but and watch his fret buzz episodes. They're, they're yeah, getting good. they're really good right now. I I've actually enjoyed watching them with my wife, and she doesn't like anything we do. So <laughs> and there's a special one coming this week. Oh yeah, special sneak preview. Special. Watch it. Sneak preview. Check it out. Thank you guys. We're signing See out. See you next time.